Welcome everyone in this video as I promised in the last video we are going to derive the range formula for projectile motion. So the picture is as follows. We have a surface like this and we launch a projectile with velocity v0. This is the initial velocity. The angle that our velocity makes with the horizontal is named theta. And of course this projectile will follow a trajectory like this which is a, which is a parabola. And I will prove that it is a parabola. And it will land on this spot maybe. And this distance is called the range or r to be uh, short. So how can we derive a formula for r in terms of the initial velocity, the angle theta, and some constants like the gravitational field strength or a couple of numbers, right? So how can we do it? Well, the first thing that we need to do is use our kinematics equations in the horizontal direction. So let me first decide on our coordinate system like this. And I am going to say that our initial position is 0, 0. So our x and our y is equal to 0 uh, at our initial position. And now we can say this. We can say that delta x is equal to v naught in the x direction times time plus 1 over 2 the acceleration in the x direction and then t squared. This is a formula that I derived in a, a previous video so if you haven't seen that one go check it out it is on the cards right now. So for our case there is no acceleration in the x direction because in projectile motion there is only acceleration in the vertical direction the direction due to the gravity that we have so delta uh, so ax is zero this goes to zero and as a result since there is no acceleration v naught x will be equal to vx at any time t and what is v naught x if you look at our diagram here we see that we are asking for this component which will be the cosine of theta component of v naught so this is equal to v naught cosine of theta now if we make this uh, this to if you make this substitution here and also we will see that uh, since we go to a distance r from starting position zero our delta x is r the range which is what we're trying to find we have v naught cosine of theta for the initial velocity in the x direction which is the in the which is the velocity throughout the motion because as i said there is no acceleration in the horizontal for projectile motion then we have the t now for the time this is going to be time of flight this is going to be how for how long we stay in the air right for how long our projectile travels so we can find it as follows we will first find the time it takes to reach uh, the top of the trajectory then we are going to find out the other half so we will calculate this as t1 and calculate the other half of the way as t2 and we're going to say that t flight which i will name it tf you might also call it t final if you like this will be equal to t1 plus t2 well, for T1, if we consider the vertical direction, we can say that the velocity in the vertical will be equal to the initial velocity at the vertical minus GT because G here, actually the negative G here, is our acceleration in the vertical direction. And of course, when we reach the top of our uh, pathway, the top of our trajectory, we're going to have Vy going to zero. As I went over, uh, I went over this in detail in the last video where I derived the formula for h max. So you can check that out as well. And if we solve for t now, this is just going to be t one, of course. We are going to get that t one is equal to v naught y divided by g, and v naught y will be if you look at the picture again, it will be this component. So it is v naught sine of theta divided by g. All great, right? Now, this is T1. What about T2? T2, when we are uh, landing, we will still have V0, right? It will be just going this way this time. But it will be V0 because 
of the conservation of energy. We return to our same level, same height, so our kinetic energy should be the same as before. And of course, the x component is same, so the y component should be also same at the end of our motion, only it is in the negative direction. So we will have negative v naught sine of theta, and this is uh, going to be equal to our initial velocity. Well, by initial velocity in the y, I mean our initial velocity when we started the second half of our motion. So what was our initial velocity just before we started this part of our motion, the initial velocity in the y? Think about it for a couple of seconds, and it is going to be zero. Because just like we discussed, we come to a rest momentarily in the vertical, and then we start accelerating downwards. So it is going to be 0 minus g t2 this time. Now you can see we can make these pluses and oh look at this. It turns out that t2 is equal to v naught sine of theta divided by g. So t1 and t2 are equal which should make sense I hope. It means that the same time is required for our projectile to reach the maximum height and then to drop back to its initial height. So we got this one. And this means T1 plus T2 is simply going to be 2 V naught sine theta divided by G. Great. Now all we need to do is substitute this expression here. So let me do that on the new page. We have R is equal to V naught cosine of theta, V naught cosine of theta times the formula for our total time, the time of flight. It is 2 V naught sine of theta divided by G. 2 V naught sine of theta divided by G. So I am going to arrange this so that it looks prettier. This is going to be V naught squared to sine of theta cosine of theta divided by G. And we could stop here because our goal was to express range in terms of theta and V naught. But, I mean, if we want to make this expression a little bit more, more simpler, we can notice that this product to sine of theta, cosine of theta, this is equal to sine of 2 theta. And I am going to actually prove this formula in a future video. This just comes from the addition formula for sine and you substitute thetas for both of the angles. And perhaps I did this proof at the time that you're watching. Who knows when you're watching this? So if we make the simplification, we get that v naught squared sine 2 theta divided by g is our formula for the range in projectile motion. And you might be asking, if I have a constant v naught, a constant initial velocity, how can I make my range the maximum? How far can I throw, throw my projectile? And to do that, which angle should I use? So how can you max the range, max r? Well, max r, of course, as I said, v naught is constant. I mean, if you increase v naught, of course, your range will increase as well. But let's say that you can't do that. You only are able to adjust the angle. This means that you will need to max the sine 2 theta and the maximum value of sine occurs at for our case when the angle is equal to 90 degrees and I mean I shouldn't make it as theta it is going to be 2 theta that is equal to 90 degrees because that is our angle 2 theta is inside the sine so that is our argument and if it is equal to 90 degrees sine will be equal to 1 which is its maximum value which means that theta should be 45 degrees for our range to be at, at its maximum value. Anyways, this was it for this video. I used a couple of results from previous videos to carry out this proof for the range. And this is it for projectile motion. I covered it in two videos. Perhaps I might, might add a few videos in the future. But anyways, if you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.